And I want to talk briefly now about another um, important group of pathogens that, uh, that rely on, uh, on irrigation for both, uh, again, getting, you know, moving in movement primarily um, within the nursery. Uh, bacteria, the, the, what separates them from the fungi is that they can't actively penetrate uh, plant tissue. So they have to get in through, whether it be a wound from a stress plant or a, um, a natural opening, um, it, that's the, the, again, stomates, hydathodes, nectothodes are the primary ways that, that the cells of the bacteria enter the plant. Um, some of the common bacterial diseases, uh, or, or I should say pathogens, are uh, Irwinia, or now known as uh, Dikaea. Um, they're big problems because, uh, primarily because they can, they can uh, have latent infection, which means basically they're inside the plant, um, there's no symptom expression, and then when environmental conditions are favorable, bam, uh, you can get severe uh, soft rot disease. Um, so big problem because it will literally just macerate the tissue and, and shut the plant down. Um, you can either you know lose entire plants or large portions of plants that have become uh, affected by by uh, Irwinia. Um, note that when the, the tissue will rapidly collapse and there's often a foul uh, odor associated with the uh, with the rotting tissue. Um, this can be, again, under the right conditions, this can be a huge issue, especially um, for plant imports. Um, there's been a lot of cases where you get asymptomatic plants that come in through the port of, let's say, Miami. Uh, they look beautiful. The grower uh, imports them, takes them back to the nursery, and then within the next day or two, uh, the plants um, become uh, completely uh, soft rot uh, ridden, and then, and then, of course, they uh, have big problems on their hands because it can, uh, again, uh, be, be fatal. Uh, this is just a, a symptom that's often associated with the uh, or asymptomatic plants. And, and you get a slight discoloration. Note the, the purplish discoloration in, in these leaves. Um, that, that's often a good indication that there's something going on in there. And we, we will often isolate uh, Irwinia from, from these areas. Now, these, this can be real subtle and not, not as prominent as what's in this picture. But the one thing you can do is, is you can pick these plants up and put them up in the light. And sometimes you'll get a, a slight chlorosis um, in areas uh, where there's high concentrations of, of the bacterium. Um, and again, if you were to move one of these plants to favorable conditions, uh, literally overnight, the tissue will just become water soaked and, and look like this, just severely uh, rotten. Um, and again, in a, in a situation like this, the grower is going to have to, to uh, there's no curing um, the, that tissue. You're going to have to cut that tissue out, uh, may possibly lose an entire uh, plant. Um, so severely, uh, well, it's an economically important uh, disease. Here's what uh, Irwinia um, stem rot looks like on Diefenbachia. And again, what's, what happens is it's a lot like uh, similar early stages, just similar to like Pythium root rot, where the lower you know, leaves uh, start to turn chlorotic. And then uh, with soft rot, you basically just get the, uh, the system just shuts down. Again, water soaked, uh, foul smelling, uh, odor associated uh, with the disease. Another really important. Uh, bacterial pathogen is xanthomonas. Um, irrigation is, is really important um, with this particular bacterium because it, it moves in through the hydathodes. And if you, if the plants, if you water late in the evening and that water, the moisture sits on that leaf surface um, overnight, uh, when early in the morning when, when the, uh, the plant starts to, uh, starts to wake up, so to speak, when right, right before sunrise, uh, you get the this uh, the gutation water, which may have cells of the xanthomonas that'll be uh, basically sucked up through the hydathodes. And uh, when this happens, it's a it's just a perfect avenue for for xanthomonas to enter the plant. Um, and then you you uh, of course the this particular bacterium can move uh, systemically within the plant, and uh, you get severe disease. Uh, lesions are first translucent become chlorotic, and then, uh, of course, water soaked. Um, 
here's a here's a classic picture of, of what the uh, infection through the hydrophils looks like. The hydrophils are generally located at the margins of the leaf, and again, they'll move in with the dictation water, and uh, the cells get into the plant, and and uh, they can cause uh, severe severe problems. Uh, of course, you know when you're when you're growing foliage plants for quality, you can't sell anything like this. So then, of course, the uh, these plants have to have to either be um, uh, cut back or they have to be destroyed. Um, here's here's what it looks like on syngonium. Again, here's a number of different leaves. This is systemic infection um, with Xanthomonas. Uh, and um, I mentioned this is a this is a really good uh, disease symptom to show when you talk about how bacteria can't you know, they enter through natural openings and then they also um, are often restricted uh, to movement within the plant because of some of the like the the, the heavier or the stronger thicker um, vein like tissues in the leaf you can see that this that basically this intervenal chlorosis and these kind of angular, angular or restricted spots, um, uh, this happens to be caused by uh, another Xanthomonas species. And again, it's just a, a great uh, symptom to show how uh, the, the, the bacterium moves within the plant and it can't just uh, break down any tissue like a fungus would, um, it's restricted. So uh, with managing bacterial diseases, um, it's important, of course, uh, to note that the, you know, the activity is greatest during the rain season. So during our summertime, um, that's where you know, the cells of the bacteria are moved uh, through, through um, by rain uh, very readily, um, wind-blown rain, and of course overhead irrigation is, an, is another primary means of moving it through the nursery. Um, it's really important with bacteria to use uh, disease-free plants from the beginning. Don't accept anything that shows symptoms, or even even wounded plants for that matter, because of course these bacteria, if they're present, they're going to move in through the wounds, and you're going to have uh, major issues. Um, of course, you want to you want to avoid injuring plants when you're working moving moving them. Um, you want to use pathogen-free soil because uh, Again, it can be another uh, avenue for introducing the bacteria into the nursery. If you do see symptoms, um, the best thing to do, of course, severely affected plants, the best thing to do is to uh, remove them immediately because they're just a reservoir for, for uh, disease. And so it's important, again, from a sanitary standpoint, to, to get rid of them, uh, reduce the number of, the, of, of effective propagules of the pathogen or um, or the overall inoculum that can be in your nursery. And, and sanitation, I mean, is, is definitely the key. Uh, surface disinfecting tools is really important. Um, and of course, there are some chemical uh, control options. Um, antibiotics, uh, they can be effective. The problem, again, is with uh, resistance. The same thing goes with copper formulations. Uh, there, there are some, especially with Xanthomonas, there are some uh, some isolates or species, I should say, or isolates within species that are um, can can are resistant to, to copper and antibiotics. Uh, but when used in a rotation, uh, they can be highly effective. There are some biological control options out there that can be effective against uh, against bacteria. The issue there, though, is again, of course, the biologicals are are driven by the environment. Um, if the environment's not favorable, they may not do as well. Um, and then, um, of course. Uh, Aliad or phosphatidyl aluminum. Um, this is a great product. It's one of the, one of the only ones out there that will actually uh, move in, down to the roots and up into the foliage. So it's truly systemic, um, and it, it, it does have some efficacy. It's reported to have efficacy against uh, against bacteria. But again, sanitation is the the primary means. If you can uh, also switch from overhead irrigation to a, to a drip or a micro jet below canopy situation, you're going to be uh, better off um, with dealing with uh, bacterial pathogens. And with that, I just want to uh, end um, with a link to uh, the plant clinic um, here in Homestead. And of course, www.plantclinic.org will take you to the website where if anybody's interested in submitting samples to the clinic, um, you can get all the information that you need, print off the um, uh, uh, submission form, 
and uh, information on how to properly send samples to the mail if, if that's what you choose to do, or uh, directions uh, to the clinic. And again, take home message, uh, confirm disease, don't guess. Thank you.